it on, Mr. Filter. I made a man. I said, tell me your story. He took out a You know what I find so funny in I don't know, like British culture is how generally people are, are really polite. You know, when you're chatting to somebody that you don't know, perhaps you've just walked past somebody on a country lane, you're polite to each other. Whereas signage generally is the opposite. It's proper abrupt, um, you know, just like no camping or do not park here, no overnight parking. Well, this, this is what's made me realize it. But these lovely, lovely signs, handwritten, shut the gate, please, ellipsis. No camping here. This is prime pasture for sheep and their lambs. Thank you, exclamation mark. Dogs on leads, please. <sighs> I don't know, perhaps I'm going a bit mad, all this sleeping in the car, but I just think that's really nice. So yes, I will just shut the gate. I mean, I'll shut the gate anyway, like, but. Anyway, welcome back to the channel. Started that one with a babble. Um, if you are new, my name is Henry Turner. I'm a landscape photographer. And I'm doing a bit of a, I don't know really, a bit of a micro road trip in Scotland. So I'm currently in heaven. So be sure to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more of me talking about signage. Um, I have to be honest, guys. It was last week's video for you. If you want to watch the particular video I'm going to talk about, I'll put it up in the corner. But you know what happened. I went out on a big hike. It was yesterday for me and I was absolutely shattered, exhausted when I got back to the car. Um, so tired, honestly. <sighs> so I booked another hotel. I couldn't face another night sleeping in the car, but honestly, I was like aching. So glad I did it. Stayed in Portree, which is the biggest town here on Sky, and I'm feeling, oh, just a little bit recharged. And that's where we're headed to now. That looks stunning, doesn't it? can see some of the small aisles in the background mint um, I want to talk a little bit about light I only thought about this on the drive here this morning um, it's something that's kind of occurred to me um, and we'll get into it but for now probably another half half a mile or so let's get down to the beach I mean, what more can a photographer want? This is madness. Again, the expectations have been surpassed. We've got Black Sand Beach here. Didn't know that. We've got sea stacks. We've got islands right off in the distance. We've got a waterfall coming off a cliff. We've got mountains behind us. We've got these beautiful weather sculpted rocks, which are black. We've got black seaweed, reflections, beautiful detail in the sky. I could genuinely go on and on. We've even got some sheep up here as well. Oh my goodness me. Which kind of brings me on to my point. Something I wanted to talk about in this video and that is light. And like I said, I was only thinking about this on the way here. Um, perhaps a little bit of a controversial opinion, but it's just that, it's an opinion. You know, don't take this for gospel. This is just something from my experience. I feel like sometimes light. Now look, when I'm talking about light in this instance, I mean sunlight, direct light, which you can see we haven't got any of that now. Um, I feel like sometimes it can be a little bit overrated, which is a mad thing to say, uh, for sure. Because look, that's what we, we crave, we chase as landscape photographers. I mean, the clue's in the name, painting with light. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just feel, I was thinking about this trip, right? This is where it stemmed from. Um, this is my fourth day now, I think, and I've had no you know, light, no sunlight, direct light, any of the days not in any of the photographs. However, I feel like the photographs I've got on this trip so far are pretty good, like quite decent, or I feel quite happy with them. You know, of course I haven't been home to see them yet. And it just made me think like, I feel that there's a real fine line, right, with light. There's obsessing over light in a good way, like we should do, and obsessing over light in a bad way. I feel like the bad way is like when you feel like you get down on yourself, you get down on your trip, your adventure, because you're thinking, oh, I never get any light. You know, I'm always in the, 
the wrong place at the right time. I keep missing it, it's doing my head in. And I've been there, that's how I used to be. Whereas now, it doesn't bother me. And this, there's one word, this is how I see light, direct light as a photographer. It's a bonus to me. I feel like if you can find a strong composition, um, a strong subject or more than one subject, that is more than half of the battle. And yeah, genuinely now, I don't go out searching for light. I don't check to see um, where, what the clouds are doing. Oh, like, am I gonna get any direct light this morning? What are the chances of a sunrise with light on the land? All right, yeah, I come out for sunrise and sunset. But you know what? You get the gist, but it's just my opinion. You know, it's just a bonus. And I think, like a lot of things that I say, I'm thinking about beginners, you know, I don't like to think of people getting down on themselves because of the feeling like they're doing something wrong. But it's few and far between. I mean, look at this, guys, we're in Scotland. What do we really expect? The middle of winter in Scotland. It'd be so naive to be going home angry because I've had no light. Come on. Anyway, now I've got that off my chest. I've got a, at least three compositions in my, my mind's eye already. This is absolute madness. One thing I always do when I'm on the beach with my tripod is get the lower, the lower section, uh, the lower leg of the tripod and bring it out just a little bit. Or obviously if you're going all the way, bring it out all the way. So that when you put it into the sand, you don't get any sand in like your brackets. It stays sort of down here on the foot and it's, you know, pour a bit of water over it, back in action. Oh, I'll tell you what, it is heaven on earth. I said it before. It just does not get any better than Scotland. This is absolutely, I'll tell you what it is. It's nothing more than a privilege to be here of a morning and to say that this is my job. An absolute dream and it's your support that allows this to happen. Ah, so this, honestly, thank you so, so much. I hope these videos are entertaining enough and informative and inspiring enough that I pay back to you as a little bit, you know, just a little bit and that you like the photography. Anyway, let's get into this one. I'm well excited about this. As soon as I stepped foot on this beach, I thought I've got to make something of this sand. So I've stuck the wide angle lens on with the polarizer and I'm in really, really close to some of this. It's like zebra pattern sand down here. It is absolutely spot on. The polarizer, I have to show you this, I'll pop it up on the screen here. Um, it's playing a massive, massive part here. So, pop it on the screen there. As you've seen it there, that's with zero polarization. So even though the filter's on the front of the lens, you can see there, that is as if there is no filter, all right? As I turn this filter around, watch what it does to the foreground. Keep your eyes on it. Look at that! Oh, it brings that zebra pattern right out. To be honest, it's one of them where the polarizer absolutely makes this photograph. So pop that off now. Um, so yeah, classic use of the wide angle lens in really, really close to um, the foreground. I mean, about 17 mil, so really wide. And then the stripes take us up to the reflection of the sea stack, then the sea, then the sea stack itself. And then honestly, guys, the clouds, astonishingly beautiful you know overcast is bad this is not overcast this is like cloudy completely different you know when it's overcast it's flat and without tone and detail this is full of detail and definitely full of tones what a treat um other than that simple stuff two second exposure at f11 and iso 64 and because i'm so close to the foreground here, even at F11, I have focus stacked this one and I'll blend them together in Photoshop. I really want to make sure the zebra stripes, zebra stripes, that's what they are, the zebra stripes, they're, I want them to be pin sharp in the foreground, but of course, that sort of C stack as well, I want him nice and sharp. <sighs> Wonderful stuff. I hope you like this first shot of today's adventure. Living the dream.
Oh, so you know what, guys? I have not even moved. Well, I tell a lie, I've moved about four foot. Isn't it mad how I've I used meters before to explain the distance between the foreground and the lens? I've just used foot then. Why can't we just use one or the other? My generation, useless. Right, remote shutter is plugged in. You can probably tell what's going on here. The entirety of this beautiful cliff here is getting caught in this photograph, guys. We're at ISO 125, I've bumped it up slightly. I'm at F9 and to get me one third of a second, which here is very, very important because what I'm doing is trying to capture the waves as they break there um, in what is going to be pretty much the foreground. It was actually the midground. I've got a little bit of the sand down here in the foreground. And then, yeah, see that as the wave breaks there, or actually just before it breaks. So the break of the, the wave is in mid flow. It might sound really specific, but honestly, this like makes the photograph. That's when I'm grabbing the shot, and that's why I've got the remote shutter on. Polarizer again, doing exactly the same thing. We're getting the cliff reflected down here in this sort of area where there's a surface um, of water on top of the sand and it's just unreal goes without saying we've got the waterfall on the right hand side and then if you look on the very far left hand side of the cliff you'll see there's just a nice patch of like i suppose like a bright area but it kind of goes back to what i was saying earlier you know that's not direct light but look at it it's absolutely beautiful because what you've got to look at when you get a patch of light like that is the contrast that you're getting. Look at the right hand side where the waterfall is, that's so dark. You wouldn't know that was a nice patch of light without the dark. It's like love and hate, isn't it? There's no hate without love and vice versa. There's no light without dark. So they complement each other absolutely perfectly. So I'm zoomed in at 50 mil on this one and yeah, it's all about remote shutter and waiting for the right moment. So let's see if we can get one here live <laughs> while she's a watching. Um, I am focused stacking as well. There we go, look at that! And when you've got the remote shutter on, you can grab... Stunning that one, I got it, I got it then. Um, when you've got the remote shutter on, you can keep pressing it. So it's almost like a, a time-lapse concept. Oh my goodness! What am I doing chatting to you? That was a good one. <laughs> oh, I got that as well, that was well lucky. But yeah, I'll probably wait here for five, ten minutes even. Just because we know at some stage there's going to be a much bigger wave. And like I said, Oh, that's really going to make the photograph, but it's it's wonderful, guys. We've got the black sand, um, the reflections, then this like it's like a bluey aqua coloured water, and then look at that sea cliff, absolutely wonderful. Going back to what I was saying about light as well, I have to say this in 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 light of fairness, it's much easier to work when there's no direct light when you're in somewhere somewhere like the Isle of Skye. You know that's only fair, isn't it? I have to say that. Anyway. I'll be here for a while. Hope you like this one as well. What is going on? What a morning! <laughs> Let's put it this way, someone's got good taste, haven't they? What a choice of car. We are in. So, um, I could have spent the whole day on that beach, to be honest. It was absolutely glorious, but uh, there's another location that I want to get to. Um, so far on Sky, 
I've probably tried to avoid the... There's, there's basically a lot of very famous locations for photography and just for tourists. And I think I've just tried to go to places that aren't those. <laughs> um, I don't really know why. I feel like, even though I haven't been to a lot of them locations in the past, I feel like I know them just because they're sort of everywhere on the internet, in books, in magazines. And I'd like to get to them one day for sure. Um, so I feel like I've tried to get to know other parts of Sky a little bit. For example, that hike last week. <sighs> there can't be that many people, you know, coach loads of people getting off and doing that hike. Oh, shattering that was. Um, so yeah, but to get to my point, the next location is very much a popular one with landscape photographers at least, but oh, should be very, very beautiful. Let's crack on. Oh my goodness, what a location. What a mountain range off in the background. You can certainly see why it's popular. By the way, if anyone's wondering, I went for the LucasAid because I had two iron brews last night. So I just fancy something different. That's my only reason. <laughs> um, oh, this is absolutely gorgeous. So as per, I've taken advice from the Photographing Scotland book that I mentioned at the start of this trip. I've come down to this sort of southern end of the the harbour from you know where I parked and it just says there's a lot of wonderful opportunities for foreground and I think that's the best way you can you know try and make try and make it original although this is far from original isn't it it's such a well photographed spot um, but yeah all I'm going to do like because the background there's only one mountain range off there in the background whereas the foreground there's a thousand and one a million one different opportunities down here um, for you as the photographer to try and you know, make something at least a little bit ori original or personal. Also, on this end, uh, you can see right up in the distance, you won't be able to see them as islands, but they are islands, they're known as the Small Isles. And they have been pretty omnipresent <laughs> throughout my whole trip here in Scotland, at least at the times when the cloud wasn't so low that I couldn't see them. Um, so I'd maybe, no promises, but I'd like to try and get a photograph looking back towards them um, more of a personal one I suppose Whoa, from this trip but for now we're ages we're out, hour, hour and a half two hours till the sunset oh, all it is is a case of trying to find some foreground interest to complement that beast in the background oh there's another wave coming in look at this oh my goodness what a treat so anyway that was a little bit rude of me um, the vista that I've been speaking about the whole time. Uh, I'm not feeling it at the minute. It's winding me up and I know why it is. It's just because it's been shot so many times before. I'm the one in the wrong gear. You shouldn't care, you shouldn't care. The only thing I think that's annoying me is every time I find a little bit of foreground back there, it feels like I'm just taking a shot that's been taken millions of times and it feels, it feels like there's no soul to it, you know, there's no point. However, I want to stress that's just the way I feel. I don't necessarily think that's right. I think that's ridiculous. You know, it's beautiful. It doesn't have to have soul. It, I don't know. But anyway, I am going to take the photograph. I've just been looking down here, actually, coincidentally. And that, I mean, look how cool that looks. You know, and that's original. I'll probably try and make something of that. But for now, I'm turning my attention to this direction, back towards the Isle of Rum. The tide's on its way in. This is phenomenal. So I found this little selection of rocks down here, just the polarizer on the front to cut through the glare. And I'm getting shutter speeds, um, or I'm selecting shutter speeds of around about half a second, quarter of a second, maybe one sixth. And this is the thing I probably most struggle with in, in any um, section of landscape photography, and that's choosing the right shutter speed. So often I get an image home and I'm, I'm ill content with the shutter speed that I've taken. So if you've got time, I'd always recommend try loads of different shutter speeds and then when you get home, you know, you'll, you'll probably decide which one's your favourite then. That's what I find. 
But yeah, just a nice little selection of rocks down here. And see, look, as the waves, this is the big one here, this rock down on the right hand side. The waves kind of need to wait for a big one. They cascade down the front. There's a big one now. Watch this, watch, look at that. Oh, and then I catch it then. I've got the remote shutter on again. And then you get all these little streams, these cascades falling down. Look, there's another one now. Oh, that's when you, come on, lad. That's when you get the shot, absolutely unreal. Background speaks for itself, mystery. Uh, the Isle of Rum, it looks black. Look at them clouds. Does it get any better than this? Um, so, feeling really good about that one. And then, yeah, this little channel does look really cool, doesn't it? It does look really cool. Got to try and make some out of that. Oh, living the dream. Silly, silly photographer. Silly boy. What a wally. So the tide's on its way in now. I would not recommend doing this. This is just stupidity. Um, but I'm going to quickly grab this shot because I'm very, very excited about this. Don't want to get ahead of myself because I tend to do it. Potentially shot of the trip. Yeah, but either way, very excited about it. But as you can see behind me, the tide is on its way in. So this composition has been over my right shoulder the whole time. And I'm making the most of this little channel here um, that I noticed when I was taking the last photograph back to the Isle of Rum. It is so, so cool and I'm well happy with this. Main reason is I just feel like I've managed to get that little bit of originality that for some reason on this evening, <laughs> I'm really craving. But I mean what I said before, you know, like there's nothing wrong with shooting original shots. It just wasn't really sitting well with me this evening. Um, but this is a really good, Oh my goodness, this looks so cool. So, you can see this rock that I'm sat on here precariously. Um, it's this sort of like reddy beige colour, but we've got these channels here in the foreground um, that once the polarizer, oh, once we turn it around fully, it's just red, vibrant, vibrant red, and it looks so, so cool. Um, I've taken a few shots in landscape orientation, and you can see now, I'm in portrait. I just don't know which one's going to work better. So, obvious thing to do is to take both and make that decision when I'm home, away from the tides and with a coffee or a beer in hand. <laughs> uh, we're at two seconds, F11 and ISO 64, and I'm focused stuck in here, which is so, so essential to make sure that this is sharp throughout. Um, one thing that I've got to mention, this is so cool the main prominent mountain through this channel that's going to be featuring in this photograph is called Skua Nastri and that is the mountain that I attempted to go up in last week's video I got really close and where I got this photograph from up there um, so uh, you know on a personal level I just think that is so so cool like honestly just to have this as a little memory I suppose and it is that very mountain what a treat. So, proper buzzing about this one. One more shot to take, thank goodness. And then let's get away. <laughs> let's get away from the Atlantic Ocean, goodness me.
a bit of a bigger one now. That wasn't bad. That was average, that one. <laughs> so I've been proper chilling out a little bit, to be honest, guys. Um, oh, I love this type of photography, like coastal photography, I should call it. <laughs> um, when you're just relying on a wave to come in, sitting, chilling out, remote shutter, and just waiting for that best moment. Um, I'd probably say this is a bit more of a classic shot from this location. Um, the only thing I'm probably doing differently here, or well, the main thing I am, is I'm going for a much longer shutter speed on this one. It's around about four seconds. I feel like, in this instance, I just prefer it. And I think that's actually what it comes down to a lot of the time, is in that very moment, do you fancy a longer shutter speed, a shorter one to almost freeze the movement? Yeah, here, I really want all this area to be that sort of milky, dreamy feeling, you know, that, oh, absolutely wonderful. I'll tell you what, it doesn't look real. That, off in the background, does not look real, and what an absolute treat we've got with them clouds again. I quite like this. Now, this goes back to what I was saying at the start of the video, like, once again, oh, that's a good one. Once again, you know, no direct light on the land, still not added the whole drip. This is just absolutely buzzing off this though. I couldn't ask for any more than this. Oh, where's the big boy? Go on lad, in you come. So what I've done, you can see, I've just got this nice channel here and I'm waiting for the water to come up and then to the left and then it gives us this like zigzag that takes us out to sea. Whoa, there's your dinner there. Look at that, absolutely brilliant. And yeah, because we've got that longer shutter speed, it's just smoothing it all out down there. You know what's making this photograph to be fair? The clouds in the background. Absolutely. Definition of drama and black mountains. What a treat. Um, so I reckon this one might be the last photograph. I'll need to check when the sunset is, but either way, as it stands now, I don't see how it could get any better than that. That is ridiculous. What an absolute beast. So look at that. Not even got a sunset, but I mean, is that not what you want when you're photographing black mountains? Black foreboding clouds atop of them all. Unbelievable. Um, so, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go all the way back home. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just wanted to say, as I sort of previously touched upon earlier on in this video, a massive thank you to you guys. It's you that make this possible for me. Um, this, this privilege that I live and thank you very much for your support. Um, yeah, it, it really, <laughs> it means absolutely everything. It means the world. <coughs> um, cheers. Yeah. Um, yeah, long drive home, seven and a half, eight hours, living the dream. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for joining me on this Scotland photography trip. If you enjoyed it, do hit the subscribe button. Um, and yeah, uh, take a look at my Prince website, my sale. I'm going to, I'm going to leave the sale on for another couple of weeks. Some of the uh, photographs that I've taken on this trip may be available on my prints page. I don't know yet because it's in the future, <laughs> but I'll make sure I leave the sale on for you. Thank you so much for your support and I shall see you on the next adventure. Out. <laughs>